The graph editor is the last motion editor we're going to be covering in this series and is probably the most powerful motion editor in Blender. It can seem really intimidating at first, but trust me, once you understand the fundamentals of using it, it becomes very simple. And we're about to cover those right now. And to be honest with you guys, as I was doing research for this video, I learned so much stuff about using the graph editor that I had no idea that you could do. So whether you've never touched the graph editor in your life, or you've been using it for years like me, you're gonna learn something valuable from this video. These tutorials take hours of script writing and preparation before I even press the record button. So please like this video and subscribe if you find it helpful. But without further ado, let's jump into it. To access the graph editor in Blender, all you need to do is mouse on over to the top of Blender right here and click on this animation workspace. However, when you do that, you might actually notice there isn't a graph editor here. This is the dope sheet, not the graph editor. But as we covered in the last video, all we need to do to change that is mouse on over our dope sheet and press control plus tab. That switches our dope sheet to the graph editor. Then after that, I'm gonna insert a location, rotation, and scale keyframe in the 3D viewport by pressing I and then clicking location, rotation, and scale. And I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. <laughs> there, now you can see the hotkeys I press. Awesome, okay, so, after that, I'm gonna mouse on over to frame 50 here using my playhead in the graph editor. And I'm actually gonna turn on auto key so I don't have to place this keyframe manually. It's gonna automatically place a keyframe when I move my object. So then I'm gonna press G, then Y. So G moves an object and pressing Y locks the movement of that object to the Y axis. Then I'm gonna confirm my movement by pressing left mouse like so. Now, we can already see some movement in our graph editor, which is awesome, but we actually can't see it very well. To fix that though, all we need to do is press numpad period on our keyboard, which is right next to enter on your numpad. That frames our selected keyframes in the graph editor, which in our case here is all the keyframes we have. And it's interesting to note that doing that in the 3D viewport does the exact same thing. So if I press numpad zero, it's going to frame our selected object in the 3D viewport, which in our case here is our cube. So if I zoom out here, you can see that we've framed our selected object, which is our cube. And in the graph editor, we framed our selected keys. And I want my animation to stop on frame 50 in this case, because if I hit play here, it's gonna be a bunch of dead space that I don't want. So I'm gonna press pause, then press P to set our preview range. Then I'm gonna hold left mouse button after mousing over frame 50, drag this box over to frame one, then release. Now, if I hit play, our animation starts on frame one and ends on frame 50, like so. So just like with the dope sheet, to access our animation channels, we have to expand this little box right here by clicking this arrow. Now, by doing that, we can see all of our location keyframes, all of our rotation keyframes, and all of our scale keyframes. To select all the keyframes in any of these channels, all you need to do is double click on them. And in our case here, we only care about the Y location keyframes because those are the only keyframes with animation data on them. So I'm gonna double click on my Y location keyframes to select all of them. So moving keyframes in the graph editor is exactly the same as moving keyframes in the dope sheet and moving keyframes in the timeline. If I press R, we start to rotate our keyframes like so. If I press S, we start to scale our keyframes. And if I press G, we start to move our keyframes. I'm gonna cancel that by pressing right click. However, what differs from the timeline in the dope sheet is we're not locked to just changing the timing of our keyframes. We can also change the value of our keyframes. So if I press G to move our keyframes and then press Y to lock our movement to the Y axis, just like we locked our movement in the 3D viewport, then I start moving my mouse, you can see that we're changing the value of our keyframes, not the timing, which is really cool. If we just wanted to change the timing of our keyframes, we could press X, which would lock our movement of our keyframes to the X axis. And now you can see we're not changing the value of our keyframes, we're just changing the timing. That is what makes the graph editor so incredibly powerful and what sets it apart from the dope sheet and the timeline. The dope sheet and timeline are great for changing timing, but the graph editor is amazing because you can not only change the timing of your animations, but you can also easily change the values of your animations, which is awesome. I'm gonna cancel this movement by pressing right click. And just like with the dope sheet, 
If we alt click on a keyframe, that selects all keyframes that are in that row. So we've now selected every single keyframe we placed at the beginning of this animation. So if I press G here, then start moving things around, you're gonna notice some really weird stuff happening in our 3D viewport. That's because we're not only changing the timing of our animation here, but we're also changing the value of our scale keyframes, our rotation keyframes, and our location keyframes. Though with our rotation keyframes, the movement is really subtle, so it's a little harder to see that. And again, if we just wanna change the timing of all of these keyframes, we press X to lock it to the X axis, so we're only changing the timing of all of our keyframes. And if I just wanna change the value of all of these keyframes, I can press Y, so we're only changing the value of our keyframes. And now you can see if I move my mouse up and down, this cube gets really big and really small. I'm gonna cancel this movement by pressing right click. And to select all of our keyframes, just like the timeline and just like the dope sheet, all we need to do is press A on our keyboard for all. Now if I press G, we're changing the value and timing of all keyframes in our scene. So I'm gonna press right click to cancel that. But say you wanna change the timing of our animation overall by using scale, like we did in the timeline and the dope sheet. We're gonna pause our animation and go to frame one and try to do that. So if I press S to scale, then move my mouse around, you're gonna notice one problem immediately. And that problem is that we are not scaling the timing of our animation, we're scaling both the timing of our animation and the values of our animation. So if we just wanted to change the speed of our animation to be, make it like overall longer or overall slower, this is not the way to do it. To fix that, again, we just press X. So now, because I pressed X and I'm locking my scale to the X axis, you can see that we're just changing the timing of our animation. So if I move my mouse up, it becomes longer. And if I move my mouse down, it becomes shorter overall. However, this is a really bad way of scaling timing because we're actually scaling from the center, which is really confusing and hard to adjust. So to fix that, I'm actually gonna press right click to cancel that. Then I'm gonna go to the top right of our 3D viewport, excuse me, I'm gonna go to the top right of our graph editor, then click on pivot point because by default, it's using bounding box center, which is not ideal for this kind of scaling. I wanna select 2D cursor which will actually make it so that we scale from our playhead in our graph editor. Now, if I press S to scale, then X to lock to the X axis to make sure I'm not scaling our values and I'm just scaling our timing, we are now making our, our animation shorter overall or longer overall from that specific point in space. Make it a little bit more obvious what this is doing. If I go to frame 50, do the exact same thing. Press S, then X you can see that we are now scaling from frame 50, which is a lot more of an intuitive way to change the timing of our animation overall. So I'm gonna cancel that by pressing right click. I'm gonna go back up here and switch this back to bounding box center. And right next to this, you might've noticed that this only show selected option is also available in the timeline. So if I deselect my cue by selecting this negative space in the 3D viewport, you can now see that we don't see any of our animation channels. But if I turn this off, we can see them all once again, because this option lets us see all animation channels in our scene, whether or not the object is selected. But personally, I almost always have that on, so I'm gonna select our cube once again. However, you might've noticed that when you select a keyframe in the graph editor, there are these handles that come off of the edges of your keyframes. These handles are what determine how the computer goes from one keyframe into another. So, if we have a nice gradual transition on the Y location, as we do here, and play back our animation, you can see that just like we're seeing in the graph editor here, our cube is kind of starting real smoothly, it gets a little bit faster in the middle, and stops very slowly. So there's a nice slow in and slow out of this movement. However, if we left click on this keyframe right here, then hold left click on our handle here, just drag that over to the right, this movement becomes really snappy and fast. So you can see that our cube is like really like jolting on to the right a little bit faster. And we can compare that to the original by doing this. So this is what this looks like originally. And if we undo that, this is what it looks like after our movement. So this is before, and this is after. So as you can see, it's becoming a lot faster and zippier. 
you can modify handles in Blender the exact same way you modify keyframes. So if I mouse over our graph editor here and press G, we can move our handle like so. If I press S, we can scale our handle like so. And if I press R, we can rotate our handle like so. And I'm gonna confirm that by pressing left click, but say you wanna reset your handle so that's back to how it originally was. All you need to do is click on your keyframe, then press shift plus S on your keyboard, then press this option right here called flatten handles. Now, as you can see, our handles are back to the original orientation they were at. But you can also change handle types in Blender. But before we do that, I'm gonna pause my animation and go to frame 25 and show you something that's really, really handy. So making sure that I have the Y location selected, then press I for insert keyframe, you're gonna see this really awesome option right here called only selected channels. This option means that only your selected channels are going to get a new keyframe when you insert it. So if I click this option and go over to my Z location, you're gonna see that there's no new keyframe there or any of my other channels. It is only inserted a keyframe on my Y location, which is really useful when you don't wanna place a bunch of unnecessary keyframes. Now I'm gonna click on my keyframe I placed on frame 25, then I'm gonna press V here to open our set keyframe handle type menu. And by default, Blender is using this option right here called aligned. Just like we saw earlier, if we click on a handle and then move it with this option enabled, the other opposite handle kind of follows the orientation of that handle. So it's aligned with the other position of the handle. However, if I press right click to cancel that, click on our keyframe again, then press V and go to free handle type, that means our handles are now unlocked from one another. So I can click on this handle here, press G, do some crazy movement like this, and now our other handle is not following this one. So I can click on our, oops, and I actually clicked off of our keyframe there by mistake. So I'm gonna click on our keyframe once again to make it visible. And I can't even see my other keyframe because my computer is really terrible monitor, but <laughs> right here, I have eventually found my other handle. So I'm gonna press G to move it. And then as you can see here, I can also move this handle independent of the other one. So I'm gonna confirm that movement by pressing left click. And now when I play back my animation, we're gonna get something really weird, but this is really useful for things like bouncing ball animations where you want something to like, you know, hit against the ground and go boop, 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 like that. That's the kind of thing that free handle types are really, really useful for. I'm gonna pause my animation by pressing space though. The final handle type I wanted to discuss is automatic. So I'm gonna box select my keyframe right here, then press V and click automatic. And the best way I can describe automatic is that it's Blender trying to get the smoothest possible transitions from one key to another automatically. And sometimes it kind of messes this up and overshoots things a little bit too much, but this option is really, really helpful for things like character hair or character accessories. We really want like a smooth movement um, quickly. So I would highly recommend you mess with this handle type. It's very, very useful. Something else I wanted to show you very briefly is if we go back to the dope sheet by pressing control plus tab, you can see that our keyframe actually looks different here in the center. So I'm going to zoom in and then use middle mouse button to zoom on over like so. This keyframe looks different because we've changed the handle type to be automatic. So if we pressed V here and went to vector, for example, our keyframe now looks like a box, and if we press V here and go back to aligned, which is the default, it kind of gets that original default keyframe shape, which is just a nice little visualization of what you're doing in the graph editor or the dope sheet. So I'm gonna switch back to the graph editor using control plus tab. So now let's briefly talk about keyframe visibility. So by default, if I zoom out here and do a big box selection, we're gonna select every single keyframe on our cube which can be really annoying when you're just trying to modify one channel, but you could keep on accidentally selecting the other ones. However, there's actually a way to fix this, which is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna left click on my Y location channel right here. Then I'm going to go to view in my graph editor and mouse on over to only selected curve keyframes. So if I click on this option and then I do a box selection like I just did, now I'm only going to be selecting the Y location channel which is really handy when you're switching between channels, you don't wanna be accidentally selecting a different channel. And again, if we wanna expand our view, we can press numpad period to focus on selected, which in our case here is the Y location keyframes. 
But what if we wanted to hide every single animation channel except the one we have selected? So we're just viewing and focusing on that channel in particular. That's actually extremely easy. With our channel highlighted like it is here, all you need to do is press Shift plus H for hide. What that does is hide every single animation channel except the one you have currently selected, which is what this little eye icon represents. So this eye icon hides and unhides channels. So if we click this on the Y location, we no longer see that. So I'm going to make that visible once again by clicking that icon. If you want to reveal all channels, however, that is Alt plus H. So Alt plus H reveals all channels and Shift plus H hides all channels except the ones you have currently selected. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is keyframe interpolation types, which let you change how the computer is interpolating between our keyframes. And that sounds a little bit complicated, but really this is very similar to what we were just doing with our handles. So I'm gonna double click on our Y location to make sure it's totally selected. Then I'm gonna press T on my keyboard, T as in train. By doing that, you're gonna see a lot of options, but really the three we care about the most by far are constant, linear, and Bezier. By default, Blender uses Bezier as its default interpolation type. So if we play back our animation here, we're getting this really smooth, you know, slow in, slow out action on our cube. It's default for a reason. This looks really nice and beautiful for most types of actions. However, if we press T, then switch this over to linear, you're gonna see the curves in our graph editor become straight lines to one another. So our cube is now just going from each keyframe in a perfectly straight line like so, which also removes the handles on our keyframes, by the way, because they become completely redundant. This is really nice when you need a perfectly, like mathematically perfectly straight movement, for example, on a camera dolly or something similar like that. And it's a really good option to have. And if I press T once again, we're gonna see our final option here, which is constant. If I click on this option, you're going to see that all the interpolation the computer was just doing has completely been erased. So there's no computer interpolation between these keyframes whatsoever. This is a lot more reminiscent of 2D animation, and it's a really nice way to block in the timing and poses of an animation early on. But that about covers it. That is just about everything you need to know to start making animations using the graph editor in Blender. We're gonna be closing up our coverage of the graph editor in the next video by covering animation modifiers, dynamic effects, and extrapolation modes, which are really awesome tools that let you modify your animations instantly and non-destructively in order to add visual noise, instant dynamic effects to your animations, and a lot more. If that was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to check out all the other videos on this channel and have a great day. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. It might feel like a small step, but you're now one step closer to animation mastery. And if you want access to an exclusive Discord community, exclusive rewards, and help ensure that I can keep making tutorials for you just like this one, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below.